Hi there, and welcome to Graham's Guide Friday Live this Tuesday, <laughs> the 12th of December. Um, that's because some um, unexpected things have occurred in recent times, and now I'm going to be tied up on Friday. Um, I would have recorded this on Thursday, um, but things happen. And um, and now I'm tied up on Thursday as well, and uh, and also on Wednesday. So you know it's that time of the year, and one of the reasons why I'm mentioning this now is because um, I want you to know that I'm a human too. Um, so when you're applying for your extensions, I can empathize completely, and I really would like to be able to um, grant those extensions. The extensions do need to meet. Uh, do need to meet the, um, the university policy. Um, so you need to meet the criteria for an extension. Um, and if you're applying for an extension for assignment two, um, you need probably, it's a good idea to get that in um, this week if you're able to plan that far ahead. If not, um, make sure that you're applying for the longer extension for assignment two because EL, ELAs are not working during consolidation week or the end of the year week. Um, and the, the unit coordinator, Tanya, will most likely be approving your extension applications, provided they meet the criteria. Um, now the unit uh, assignment due dates are published at the beginning of the teaching period. And this is to allow students to be able to plan well in advance for um, any eventualities or any things that they already have planned that are coming up. So you can't apply for an extension for, because it's Christmas holidays or because it's a religious holiday because the um, dates have already been published and you need to plan ahead. And this is one of the reasons why if you've been following um, my suggested milestones, um, this coming weekend, you could be writing um, your final part of assignment two, um, ready for submission to Studiosity if you want feedback from Studiosity. And in that case, you'll have a fairly clear uh, break. You probably won't even need to look at your studies um, in consolidation week or in um, the week leading up to your the, the due date for assignment two because you'll already be organized and well ahead of schedule. If you're not... If you haven't started your draft of assignment two yet, um, you really need to get onto that now because uh, it's it's imperative that you that you allow yourself, give yourself, you deserve the time to work on assignment two to head towards getting a, a good grade for assignment two. Um, just quickly about your grades for assignment two. Um, you may be very surprised to hear that the average grade in my um, 10 years of um, working this unit, the average grade across, we have about a thousand, but sometimes we have between a thousand and um, 2000 students in this unit. I think this teaching period, we have slightly less, less, less than a thousand students, but it's highly likely based on um, the history of the marking of this um, assignment too, the average grade will probably be around 55%. So, yeah. <laughs> um, that's re The reason for that is because most people who are taking this unit are not expert writers, um, expert academic writers, and unless you're an expert, it's very hard to attain the mark of a high distinction. Um, uh, if you're uh, well-versed in writing, uh, if you've been paying attention to all the um, advice given um, during these first six weeks, it's very possible to get a distinction level grade, but a high distinction um, it is very rare. So um, you need to uh, you know, keep that in mind when you're getting your results back, that this is not an indication of your intelligence or your capability or your ability. It's simply an indication of where you are in your expertise of becoming a writer of academic writing. <laughs> so don't feel bad if you get, if, if you get a credit for assignment two, 
you have done really well. So um, aim for the highest grade you can get, but just um, be aware that uh, the average grade, as I've said, um, is usually around in, in the 50s. Um, and if you get a credit for this assignment, you're doing very well. If you get a, high, if you get a distinction, you've done incredibly well. Um, and if you're one of the few people who get a high distinction, congratulations um, if that occurs. All righty. So th now I, that wasn't meant to be bad news. That was just meant to be um, regular news. Uh, don't feel bad. Uh, but, um, when I first started, I my grades were low and here I am, an expert in my field <laughs> and teaching you lovely people. So you can go from, you know, I failed high school, by the way. In fact, at high school, um, my maths teacher came around in year 10, I think it was, handing out the maths test to everybody and passed my desk. And I said, oh, I, I, I haven't got a test. And he turned around in front of the whole class and said, I'm not giving it to you, Graham, because you probably won't pass. It's unlikely you're going to pass this test. So if you've got any reading you would like to do while the others are taking the test, you can do some reading. <laughs> I was absolutely devastated. Um, clearly, this teacher was not a good teacher. Um, and that um, moment in time affected me um, for many, many years, probably still affects me now in some ways. Um, you know, a slap, of, a slap of, in the face of that magnitude, um, even though it was probably only small at the time, um, it can affect you for a long time to come. So, um, look, I can empathise with um, those who have, have never done academic writing before, um, and that's why today I want to um, show you the assignment resources that are available to you. Let's get straight into it. I've already talked for seven minutes, bit of a pep talk. Um, okay, so today's agenda is the assignment resources and let's get straight to them. I'm gonna go to um, group 18 and down here to assignment two. This is um, the where you should be spending a lot of your time. I mean, once you've gone through um, and participated in the discussions and participating in the discussions um, could be posting, could be reading, could be responding to other students' posts or creating your own posts, lots of different levels of engagement. You, there's no need to answer every question in every discussion. Just maybe you only wanna write a sentence. That's absolutely fine. If you wanna write more, that's okay too. If you want to practice your academic writing, that is very welcome. And I will provide you feedback on your academic writing if you do citing and referencing in your discussion board posts. That is encouraged. Okay, back to the resources for assignment two. Um, assignment two, in to go into that discussion. Right at the top, um, Tanya's providing uh, video guidance for each of the marking criteria. So I highly recommend you watch um, these videos for each of the marking criteria. Um, and then down here, I've just, yesterday I did this little update, um, do the following, and that is watch the Collaborate recording, um, watch Tanya's video guidance above, and watch my videos in the ELA updates. So let's click on ELA update. This is my Friday Lives. This is where I publish my Friday Lives now. So let's right click and open that in a new window. Head into here. And so here um, I have provided um, guidance every week. So here is my week one Friday Live. Um, and it also provides a review of the sort of things that you should have been doing during that week. Um, and I also provide the agenda for what is inside my Friday Live. So that hopefully that's helpful to you. You can see what I'm covering and um, easily go back and rewatch that. I've also put here the milestones that I think um, would be good for you to have been up to. Um, you don't have to follow these milestones. This is just to help you um, move forward in the assessments. So in week two, I recommended writing the introduction for assignment three. And if you head into um, my Friday Live for week two, um, you'll probably find more about um, writing your introduction for assignment three. Uh, that was a bit weird because assignment three is not due until February, but good reason for that being mentioned here in week two. In week three, um, my recommended milestone was having a go at writing the draft for assignment two, part one. 
in week four, my recommended milestone was writing the draft for part two of assignment three. And then last week in week five, um, my recommended milestone was uh, working on part three of assignment two. And when I post this week's Friday Live, I will be suggesting that your milestone should be to draft assignment two, part four. And that would be the last part. And so if you were drafting part four this weekend, you would have all of your parts now completed if you're following these milestones. And, um, and once you've got that full draft complete, then you could submit that to Studiosity um, to get feedback on your whatever it is you would like feedback on. And if you, you can specify if you want feedback on your citing and referencing, um, you can do that. Alrighty, let me go back now to the assignment two Q&A discussion. Um, I've also mentioned here, do the following, um, aim for a word count of 1,500 to 1,600 words. I've mentioned that the cover page and the reference list are not included in the word count. You also must cite and reference supporting evidence. Um, and I've provided some examples here, um, a professional standard document that might be a code of ethics or a code of conduct. You will need to cite and reference the Future Work Skills 2020 report in part three. And um, Baldovino or Brown, you should be citing them in part two when you're discussing the um, case study communication. And here, do not do the following. Do not write an essay. Assignment two is a series of short answer questions. An introduction and conclusion are not required. Submissions under 1,350 words will struggle to meet the assignment criteria and likely to impact your ability to pass. So you really need to be hitting the mark of 1,350 words. And as I mentioned up here, aim for between 1,500 and 1,600 words if you want to pass, if you want a, a really good chance at passing assignment two. And again here, writing more than 1,650 words won't benefit your grade um, and marking stops. Once we reach 600, 1,650 words, we don't mark beyond that. So if you've written a very long assignment, and it's missing, and we, we stop mark, if, if 1,650 words only gets us three quarters of the way through your assignment, and beyond that is 25% worth of your assignment, like maybe questions five, six, and seven are beyond 1,650 words, that won't get marked. And that's highly likely to result in not passing because we haven't been able to mark the answers to those questions. So it is critical to hit this word limit um, and uh, follow the guidance provided. Um, also on my list is the resources in the Student Hub. So let's go to the Student Hub, um, Academic Writings. Click here and log in to the Student Hub. Okay, so this is, I showed you how to get here last week. Um, I've got that shortcut link there provided if you want to follow the shortcut. So um, Studiosity is that um, service that's provided. So if you click on here, it will tell you more about Studiosity. Um, the next excellent resource here for you is the essay writing resource. And even though assignment two is not an essay, this section here on teal because um, there is a formula for paragraph writing in academic writing and we provide you with um, the teal approach which is topic sentence evidence explanation and linking sentence so this teal approach to paragraph writing we'd like to see you have a go at that approach when you're writing your answers for assignment two. So you won't need this first part over here, the introduction or conclusion, but this second part here on how to structure a paragraph that will help you um, structure your responses in your paragraphs. Um, 
Further down here, you'll see information on the word limit and the word count, what is included in the word count and what is not included. Um, so that's all that's in the essay writing tab. Formatting and presentation will give you more information than I've already provided you. So I probably don't need to give you any more there. Um, some interesting and useful information here on quoting, paraphrasing and summarizing. Highly recommend you read through this section. And finally, the use of verbs of attribution. Probably sounds a bit highfalutin. <laughs> it's just about, um, if you read through it all, it'll make sense. I won't go into detail because I'm already up to 15 minutes here. We can talk more about verbs of attribution later, but if you read through this, it should make sense. If you've got any questions about this, ask me in the discussion, in the assignment to discussion, and I will um, provide you examples of verbs of attribution and talk more about that. But um, that's as much as I wanted to provide you with today. It's really showing you where the resources are, where the assignment resources are for you for assignment two, um, because I won't be available after this coming Friday. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm busy. Uh, I've got um, lots of things going on. As I mentioned, I'm a human like you, uh, just quickly. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this today on a Tuesday is because um, I've found out that I have a cataract in my right eye, um, which is causing my vision not to work too well. You can finish the video here, by the way. <laughs> you don't have to listen to my schedule, but just so that you know that I understand that we get busy. Um, so I've got um, I've got to go for cataract specialist appointments. That's costing me money I did not want to spend at this time of the year. I've also got a funeral. My mother's sister, my mother passed about a decade ago, and her sister just passed at 102, so she's lived a wonderful life, but I need to go to her funeral on Friday, and that's on the other side of Port Phillip Bay, so I'm having to take a ferry from Queenscliff to Sorrento and stay overnight in Mornington so I can attend the funeral on Friday, so you can see that's why I'm not filming Friday Live on Friday. Um, and then I've got to be back in Geelong Surf Coast for a dinner on Friday night um, because my um, husband has a dinner and I will be accompanying him to he's a justice of the peace so um, there's a justice of the peace dinner in Geelong and I'll be going to that Friday night and then um, I've got people coming for summer solstice I've got people coming for um, New Year's I've got you don't need to know this but I've got um, other minor surgery coming up in January as well um, and all of these require expenses and times and, <laughs> oh dear, all the fun of the fair. So um, you might think that you've got a full schedule as a student who's working. I also have a full schedule as an ELA who's working and trying to run a home and a private life as well. Um, look, great to catch up with you. Um, if you want to tell me more about what you're up to, you can do that in the social page. Just let me have a quick look. Where is that? I'll just quickly go back um, into the schedule uh, discussions. If you want to talk more socially, you certainly can with your fellow students. Where is it? Um, either in general Q&A or here in a social space. Um, is anyone written here yet? No. <laughs> Maybe I should write something here in social space and we can get a chit-chat going there as well. All righty. Thanks for your patience today, listening to me rant and rave, and hopefully those resources will be helpful to you. Um, I'll catch up with you um, for my next Friday Live. won't be until the new year, so I'll catch up with you then. Thanks for joining me during these first six weeks of Friday Live, and I'll catch up with you after the break. But between now and then, I'll be in the discussions answering any questions that you have. Bye for now.